Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Mike Delicio, bravissimos, radically bored, but never pianissimo. CRC, voice of the people. Whoa! Shot out of a cannon. Oh, that's right. I was going to change my hat for this video. Also, <laughs> uh, Sorry. Uh, pretend I'm wearing a different hat. Hmm. Um, so, welcome to the Dice Towers Top 100 Games of All Time. Your Top 100, my Top 100, and Mike's Top 100. And that's it. We no want to say thank you <laughs> to some of our sponsors. We want to say thank you to Eric Lagnyebach, to Travers Matthew Chandler, to Bonnie Mann, to Jessica Cly, to Nicholas Rock. Oh, actually, no, he just wants to say thank I you to Rock. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to thank Rock. Rock. The Rock, can you smell? No, like the first half of Roll, the yeah. city was built. On Rock Scott Mocker, mm -hmm. Patrick <laughs> Steele, James Mark Dagro, and James McDonald. James McDagro and James McDonald? Oh, that's, that's man. James right Mark Dagro. Yeah. Thank you for the support, everybody. Thank you, folks. This episode is sponsored by the World Series of Board Gaming, which I will be at later this year in September. And you also could be there, especially if you win our contest. You can enter our contest by emailing us at contest at dicetower.com. In the subject line, put the word Vegas. Mm. And just like the guy in the plane the first time we went to Vegas. Very excited. <laughs> right. That guy was I super excited. That. It's like, Vegas. <laughs> he kept shouting. We had a guy on a plane who kept shouting, Vegas. He's excited. He might have been inebriated. You shouldn't be that inebriated. And when I say the word might, I don't know what that word means. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'd love to have you come there. So if you win one of the 16 tournaments that you can enter there, mm -hmm. you get a ring. Those rings are... Seriously? Yeah. Those like like a, a ring. Yeah. Like a real ring. Do you have to kiss the ring? Like a jewel embedded ring that's worth over $1,000. Jewel also. embedded ring? All right, I got to beef up on my Carcassonne, folks. Carcassonne wow. is not one of the sixteen. Events, Good, because Mike. I don't like Carcassonne. <laughs> Maybe it'll be but Viking Wingspan is seesaw. one of the sixteen events. I, I like Wingspan. Uh, oh, Viking Seesaw! If that goes Viking in there, so might be a side I event. Might be, be side. Anyway, you get one of these rings, one. and they have they actually have rings for every tournament. Really? And then they'll size them for you there. There's a jeweler that comes in and everything. So that's pretty wow. cool. Wow. And you can get one wow. of those. It's like an episode of The Bachelor. Neil Lane shows up. If you look, up. though, no rings on my fingers. <laughs> um, that's because I didn't play in any of the tournaments. Because I was busy in the open gaming area there that you can also play in. You know, there was exhibitors there, too. So it was sounds, a lot of fun. Like I met a, a game designers and stuff. Super fun. We hope to see you there. Check it out. World Series of Board Gaming. Also, check out, we are down to like 36 hours oh, man. of the Dice Tower Kickstarter, and it's getting crazy in there. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on out, folks. Come one, come all. And get some... Uh, I'm, I'm okay with come all, right? Yeah, that's come good. Come one, but also bring everybody Bring, else. bring some uh, friends, too, while you're <laughs> Like, if you're like, ah, I'll do, get to it next week. Don't do it next week. Please don't. Do no. it today. Mm -hmm. Come check it out. All right, so here we are. This is the lowest... Watched video of the whole top 100, I think. This 70 to 61. Just, just okay. Is that right? Okay. It's either this one or 60 to 51, and that's Balderdash. You should be watching Let me it. See. I don't Hold know why I'm saying that, because if you're watching Balderdash. this, then I'm not talking to you. No. We're bucking the trend. No, no Balderdash. This is going to be highest watched video of the year right now, I'm calling yeah. it. We need to then do yeah. something for that. I need, like... Yeah, Just, were... like, really, really clock me. I, like, I need some blood. Chris, that... bring in the ferrets. <laughs> no? No? That... Too, too soon for the ferrets? All right, we'll save that for the next video. <laughs> that would get so a lot of views, Really though. clock me. What? <laughs> what What's wrong with you? Well, we want views. Oh, we got a super chat, though, from Revolver. Ooh, Greetings from Chile. Chile. Chile is my favorite country in the world. Okay. I really like is... your childhood this morning. Here I, in I the met someone from uh, Chile kind of... at... Uh, Gen Con, it's so cool meeting these people from, you know, yeah. it's really cool. And if you're at Essen, oh my gosh. you meet people from everywhere. You it's do. fantastic. You do. And now, we might go to Essen again if you back our Kickstarter. We're, we're, yeah, we're not quite there yet. But. We are not. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, look, even though I think this is a good time, because we're talking about amazing games. Yes. These games are better than, 
I don't know, like 6,000 other games. Mm -hmm. you know, the best way to think about it is these games are better than every game except for like 40 games right. ever. Right, right. You know? Mm -hmm. Do you think of it that way? Yeah, 60, but yes. <sighs> yes. Like, <laughs> no, well, no, this one here, the one at the uh, 60, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. That one's 61 is the lowest. Okay. Right. Math well, is hard, these are very Tom. good games. Math la, 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 la. is hard. Mm. Let's get started with uh, who goes first. I think it's me. I think it's going to be me, Tom. Who's on first? Um, what's on second? Roy's going to play a clip. I don't know. <laughs> Palindrome, baby. My number 70 is what I like to call a modern classic. Mm. It's a card game. This is a game that I think uh, ushered in a whole... It wasn't a new genre, but it became like a renaissance for micro games. Love number letter? 70 is Love Letter, yes. I've heard of it. I need to be specific. I'm going to be very specific. I'm happy with Base Love Letter. Oh, now, the there boring are, vanilla of gamers. There are later versions that are great. The Batman version is great. Yes. Uh, the, the, um, the Marvel one is really good, the Infinity yes. Stone one. But I'll tell you, I just last year uh, played... Which was a month ago. It was a month ago, basically. Played with both of my sons... Um, Back to back to back. This game just, it, it continues to bring joy. That's the word. For me, this game is a joyful game, right? It is so quick. Once you get to know the cards, and, and especially if you play with the same uh, kind of group, it just is such a breezy yeah. game. It, it just, it, it's not that old, but it brings me a feeling of nostalgia already. Um, it does a lot <laughs> with a little, right? I it's guess a, there is it's that. A, it's a small deck of cards, and it, it now it's not as much of a novelty, I suppose, but mm -hmm. at the time, I was so taken with this idea of you only have two cards, right? The play whole a deck card, is like 16 right, cards. Play a card, draw a card, yeah. and within that framework, to have such a great level of interaction, you get to, like, you know, be able to call... Uh, you're definitely holding. You're, you're definitely holding the prince or whatever. You know what I mean? That kind of a thing. Looking at people's eyes, getting them to. I just really think this is a great little game. It continues to uh, it continues to bring joy. Yeah, I think I, I definitely underappreciate how interesting this was when it came out. Yeah. The micro game thing that doesn't get as much. I don't know reverence maybe. Yeah. But yeah, sixteen cards is the whole game is. Pretty nuts. Yeah. Isn't it 18? Maybe it's 16. I think it's 16. The reason 18 I know is, is the other is button shy. Well, there's a new one. Right. Button shy is 18. I think this yes. is 16. And then the new version, which is actually the one I have, or one of the ones I should say that I have, just includes like brings the total card count to 21, I think. Yeah, I have that one too. The slightly larger box that has. I have, no, the... mine's in the baggy. Oh, the, interesting. The okay. Z Man baggy pretty uh, one. Mine's mm. in a burlap sack. Mine's in a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Cat in the back. Mine's in the one that's in the cat. Um, we want to say thank you to Sebastian, who now Poland is our favorite. Okay, okay. Bye, now, Chile. Now you tried so hard. Poland. My number 70, Love Letter. My number 70, uh, man, I had a lot of these grouped up. Um, is another flip and write or roll and write or something and write. I'm starting to feel that's your whole list. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I've had. Here's the problem. They grouped up right here. They do group up, though, because if you're like, if you feel almost the same way about some games, yeah. they're going to kind of be in the same spot. Yeah, that's true. That is this true. is the third of what I guess I consider a trilogy for no good reason. Kokoro was 87. Mm -hmm. Was this the Buff Parrots one? The Above Paris? The Buff Parrots. That was Trails of Tucana already. You just that, it wasn't that a one. parrot, it was like a cat, a buff cat. Mm -hmm. So Kokoro was 87. Oh, I, Trails I, of Tucana was 79. I gotta guess. 70 is. Is it Riverside? Riverside. Ah, yeah! Riverside is my number 70. This one is not a flip and write, it's actually a roll and write. Mm -hmm. You are on this cute little cruise making your way down a river, a frozen, I guess. A uh, uh, river's not frozen, a, a cold river. Making it down one side and up the other, <laughs> and visiting, like sort of selling tickets and visiting these little villages. Yeah. It's a really neat little one. It's got a few more rules than the other two I just mentioned, mm. so there's a little bit more going on. But once you internalize what's happening, it's got a nice amount. It's not one that I would say is, um, I guess the better way to say that is, it's one that I think has a lot of replayability. It, it can evolve differently. Every time you are playing, you can focus on different things. You are going to visit different places. The sh the speed at which the ship moves is up to the dice. Mm. So you might be hoping to visit something, and then it zips on down that channel, and you no longer can reach that place from where you are. 
and it's really neat. There's a few interesting things in it. So yeah, Riverside. Again, I'm not sure if this one got a lot of love or not. I don't know how available it was. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's also I, true. I think it's a little bit tough to get a hold of this one, and, and I think that's part of the reason why it doesn't get much more buzz. Yeah, that's possible. Chili Fox, um, I guess, you know, wasn't that readily available yeah. their games. They had a couple of games, and uh, again, these are sort of, this company is kind of adjacent or a sister company sort of to a Porta games. Right, right. Same people, you know, mm -hmm. and and they're again they're also doing great stuff. So Riverside, I do love that cover. My number seventy was one hundred last year. Exactly one hundred. Okay. Yeah, wow. so it moved up to seventy. It was seventy six the year before that. It wasn't even on the list the year before that. Then it was ninety. It's all over the place. I think it depends on how much I play it because sure. it's been on the list for like thirteen years or so. <clears throat> and thank you, Driftwood. Yeah, it's a Howard Stern Baba fan. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. But I. I, I, I like this game because when I have five people and people want to say, hey, let's play a... Is this the best five-player game of all time? No. We're going to find out. I don't know. If it's the one I think it is. Oh, go ahead. It's just a game that comes to my mind with five players that these people probably haven't played. It's oh, currently okay. out of print. Oh, then it's not. Although Mojito might pick it up, maybe? Who knows? Mm -hmm. And that would be Coliseum. Interesting. I, only well, I, was, thinking, Mojito. I was thinking Bavank or whatever. Bavank? Like, bonk, va, whatever that is. That trash yeah, game. Yeah, that probably didn't make it on my list. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Coliseum, oh, they put the wrong one. I, this is not the version I recommend. Yeah, unfortunately. This is uh, the best version, Tom. No. Okay. I have a question. No. How did that dude mm -hmm. get those scratches on the inside of his shield? Because <laughs> he flips it. Mm. He's like one of those sign twirlers. Oh, yeah, he's oh. like the guy <laughs> with the shield. <laughs> That's what it is. Right, and in the middle of the Coliseum, you get the guy with the air, you know, one of these. Yeah, yeah. Are these? The trapeze. And <laughs> it's a more modern Coliseum. It is a more modern Coliseum, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, movement, this, version, this version's fine. They play pretty much the exact same. I love the theming of this, where you're putting on shows. Yeah. It's not really about fighting in a Coliseum, because uh, no one has yet made a, a perfect game about that yet, really. No. Um... But just about getting the resources has a nice auction trading phase to it. You get to upgrade your Coliseum. It's rolling. It's rolling. Move even. It Tom, is. you got me super excited about the possibility of Mojito picking. I just up. made that up. I don't know. I know, but I could see him doing that. That's what they've been doing. They've been picking up. Do you really like this game? I like it. I don't like it that much. Yeah, so. I, I do like it. I you mean, used to like it more. I liked it all right when I played it a couple of times, but this is not one of the ones that I thought was a for me personally. A hit from Days of Wonder. Oh, I always thought I it was like, the Days of it's all right, version. and the production quality, superb, especially sure. for its day. Yeah. I mean, it was so attractive. Mm -hmm. I just never liked the game that much. Mm. But it's been a, it's been one that's held on for you. It has held yeah. on for me. All right, let's go to the people. All right. <laughs> the people's choice, number 70, <laughs> is... Was 103 last year. Oh, the voices are back. <laughs> and then it was 51. It's been on the list since the beginning. Last year was the only year it didn't make it. Oh. <laughs> it's Zulkin. Starts with a T. The T is silent. The Mayan So are half the other letters. Which ones? No, I don't know. Shut up. Oh. Thank you, Zulkin. James. Thank you, Rainfall Projects. Uh, Z, what number is Hoop and Stick at? 64. What is Hoop and Stick? What were we <laughs> talking about this morning? This from from Smorgasbord. It's, it's three. It's Hoop oh, and yeah, Stick was three, three okay? Right. Rainfall Projects says we're making too many games to add it to their to-buy list. That's on y'all. <laughs> Zulkin, the game with gears. Now, yeah. my level of excitement for Zulkin did not... was. At such a peak, I don't think yeah. any, no matter how good the game was, it couldn't have exceeded. I was like, you get to roll these gears around? Oh no, that big gear turns around once the whole game. It does, but it, while it is a gimmick, it's a very functional gimmick. Oh, it like, works it well. It really works. And repeated plays, Chris Yee got me to try this game again, mm -hmm. and I enjoy it. I still don't love it, though. Yeah, it's very tight. Um, but I know it, this one's very popular. I used to say it was the most popular tea game by the people, but <laughs> stay anymore. tuned. My problem with Zulkin is I always want to go for the skulls. That's all I care about is getting the skulls. I never win. I've never played. Must have the skulls. Do you watch Indiana Jones 4 right beforehand? No. Yeah, baby. I watched the good one. Oh, wait, no, that is a good one. I was no, 4 is the bad one. I was getting one. confused. No, 4? Which one is 4? Four? 4 is the g g crystal skull. Okay. That's why I mentioned it. Yeah. I mean, I That's this. a terrible are they, are one, the, okay? Are the Adventures of Young Indiana Jones, are they good? I haven't seen the Adventures of Young Indiana Jones. <gasps> Color me They're abashed. remaking that with Harrison Ford, CGI. <laughs> they they de-aged him. He's 12. Wow. He's they 12 hired, years old. They hired a kid and they just stick his face just, on they it. They just put his face. They tell the kid, stand there and point. Just point a lot. Be Harrison Ford. 
<laughs> okay, anyway, the European people's choice is Zulkin. Uh, There's going to be a list, huh? Mm, Here we go. Now we're going. All right. Um, never let it be said that I'm not a... Bill and Ted fan. Gamer with versatile taste, because I just started this list off with Love Letter, the hallmark of minimalism, right? Mm -hmm. Basically like the poster child for minimalism. 16 cards, there's your game. A couple Done. of tokens, right? It's Done. all you need. My number 69 is the other end of the spectrum. Uh, this is a very... Wait, all you need is love. Bum, ba, da, da, da. All you need is Cloud Spire, number 69. This is a game that has a wow, massive amount wait. of components. I get whiplash from this. Right. <laughs> You oh, can, my word! You can play it in the bathtub, allegedly, um, because it's got uh, plastic cards and, oh, you know... And maybe, solo? Maybe not good for the neoprene. Is it a solo bathtub game? <laughs> Do you really want to go down this road? I huh? really oh, don't. Oh, <laughs> we may want to beat this. All right. Let's back this one up. Cloud Spire is a game that is complex. It's a lifestyle-type game in, that, in the sense that... To really get everything out of it, you have to put the time into it to learn how the different factions work because it's an asymmetric game where you have you play as a particular faction that has very particular strengths. It's kind of a MOBA style game a, a, where, where you'll have some automated movement if you're playing it solo. If you're playing it against another person, then it's going to work a little bit differently. But it is a beautiful production, a maximal you know, you have a minimal approach. This is a maximal approach. This is That's, yeah. the most... Circus maximal. Circus maximal. This is going over the top in production in every way. Thick poker chips, thick neoprene mats, huge box. Um, but it's a solid game. It's not just about the components. However, again, you really are only going to get out of this what you are able and willing to put into it. I'm not. Yeah, that's the thing. You played it once with me, right? It was I fun. It I, I didn't dislike the game. Yeah. But I don't have the effort to put into this. I'm not willing to put it in. That's it, what it is. You have to really be able to put the effort to get the most. Out I of it. offer Z, Z is as still tribute. Chewing on his tongue. Oh, there's something going on there. He's thinking. <laughs> yeah, if I had a visual for what's above yeah, his brain, yeah. no, we'd have to happen. black we'd the have screen. To black it out. Uh, yeah. All right. My favorite solo bathtub game is Cloud Spire, <laughs> coming in at 69. Okay. That will be coming up at one of our What's Your Solo Show <laughs> called oh, again. Geez. The Delicio Factor. <laughs> That's my number. Oh my gosh, you want to get big views. There we go. <laughs> Doing this in the bathtub? I'm just saying, if you had a live yeah. stream in the bathtub. I'm not helping you set up the cameras for that one. That's a whole new revenue okay? stream that we What's can on you, pal, okay? <laughs> I don't want the cameras near water. What is wrong with you? It's your black magic device. <laughs> Here we go. My number 69 is a two player abstract game from the best abstract series on the planet. Oh. Solitaire for two. The Gip series. The Gip series. Series. This is Matrix. Gip. No, it's Czar, actually. Um, Czar is one of my favorites in the series. There might be more coming up. This one is one of the ones that does not get a lot of love. It was one of the later ones, for sure. Mm. And it also came after a dip in the in the project. And again, I'm, I'm talking in broad terms here. Most people say that Yinch and Devon and those are great. And then there was a little bit of a dip for, like, punked. And stuff like that. Those yeah. are less... Punk did not get that much love. Right, and this came out after that. But I thought this was an upswing, again, in a tremendous way. This I think game this also is... looks like GIF. It, it, it does, it does. It does. Yeah. This is one of the fastest games in the series. Mm. It's one of the most cutthroat and quick to get there games in the series. Uh, I don't know if you've played it much. I played it a couple times. Yeah. That was it. And... Um, yeah, and I don't know if you liked it much, but I, I really, liked it. I, remember, I really do enjoy it. I remember it. enjoying it. I I like the color one better. Oh, really? But, yeah, for that? me, it's Yinch. It's, called, but... it's Yinch and then Devon, I think. Devon, then the color one. Right, which then I don't Tamsk. know what that's called. I'm just kidding. It's not Tamps. Yeah. <laughs> Tamps that one's one out. With, that one's is, out. Is that the one with the timers? That's the one with timers. Oof. that They, they like ejected it from the series. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> exist. No one talks about Tamps. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, this is a really fun one. You should try it out. <laughs> All right, my number 69 was has been on the list for seven years and once was at number seven. Ah, but I still enjoy this game. I haven't played it in a while, but it gets a lot of play at our conventions. It's the big game that people like. It looks like a war game, but it's a Euro game, and that is Scythe. Oh, wow. Okay. Scythe. I remember distinctly when this was on Z's Top 100 at one point, and it was not on mine. It was at 140, and Would then popped on. Would you say that Fenris on. is what brought this up? 
Yeah. Keep the top 100. Yeah. yeah. Well, also, I started playing it more, too. Yeah. Um, this also has a great digital Im implementation, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I think someday I'm going to do a top 10 of games I went into expecting something and didn't get that. Yeah. And I think Scythe, I kind of was like, that cover, I was like, I am getting that cover. Right. You don't get that cover, really. You don't. No, it's very much an efficiency puzzle. Yeah. And uh, then you, but then once you kind of realize that, then you start enjoying it more. Yeah. yeah. And I still wish more games would do the whole actions get better oh and cheaper. Gosh. It's so great. It's fantastic. I love this game. Yeah, the, the, the simplicity of moving a cube from one place to another and you're both revealing and covering yeah, something. it's really smart. There's something about that that's just truly satisfying. It is. With one fell swoop, you balance a scale. This gets better, this gets worse, just by moving one thing no, over. No, they both get better. Mm -hmm. Because you're making it. I guess that's yeah, true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, one gets better, one gets better also, but by covering something, it gets better. Anyway, the elegance of that mm -hmm. can be overstated. Also, the scoring on this, I think, is pretty yeah. innovative actually, as well. I think the scoring is my least favorite part of it, I love actually. I the scoring, yeah. Because I like the stars. Right. I just don't like that the heart track is too important almost. That's I the gotcha. one thing yeah, I would change. Yeah, that is important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number 69 for the people was 91 last year. <laughs> it's a little goofy. It's a little bit. <laughs> 109 the year before that. It's moving on up. Gorsh. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is Grand Austria Hotel. Ah. I'm done. Uh, Grand Austria Hotel definitely has been a sleeper hit, mm. especially since the company who made it's out of business. That's true. Um, although... Mayfair is Lookout. Probably is it's probably published under Lookout slash Asmodee. Oh, okay. Because they did an uh, ex expansion for it, I think. Right, the Waltz. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. There was a big Kickstarter. This is one of the games that you can always find upgrades for somewhere because yeah. people sell a little glasses of wine. But this game about having a hotel, getting people to stay at your restaurant, which forces them to stay at your hotel. I don't know why. <laughs> what you're putting in the food. Uh -huh. They're like, ah, oh, so you full. checked in. You can't check out. No, no, you can check out. You just if you no. eat, you also got a hotel room on the side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The meals are very um, expensive. Thank you, Pestilence. <laughs> When's the last time you thought you'd say that? He's, thank you, Pestilence. He's talking about it's his YouTube Christmas, Pestilence. Aww. You're huh. no problem, Pestilence. Anyway, um, this one I like a lot. I think that it has a very terrible player range. It's mm. super terribly slow at four. However, I heard the expansion fixes that. I've not played the expansion. Okay, okay, but okay. I do know that this one gets a lot of love still from people. And it's like I said, it's it's moved up. It was, uh, what did I say? Was it 69 was it last year? 91 the year before that at 109. So that's pretty good. I'm it's surprised pretty... that I've not played this one. It's not that I've gone out of my way not to. I just haven't ever You tend to like these designers, Yeah, right? I think I would probably dig this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, 69. All right, uh, 68 is a game that um, many aspects of it are relatively standard, but there's one particular element of it that I like so much that it's why it's in my top 100. This is a game called In the Hall of the Mountain King. Um, this is the only one of the two to make it in. Yes. Now, I, I need to play the other one more, quite honestly, um, because I played this a lot more than Fall of the Mountain King, which are two different games by different designers. But uh, In the Hall of the Mountain King is a game that it uses polyominoes, but it's definitely not a polyomino game. No. Really what those really are are just kind of like almost root building to the center of the board. It's trickle-down economics. That's the best part. The best part of the game is the resource, how the resources work in the game. You're basically building, hmm. I think it's called a troll's moot, which is basically like a pyramid of trolls in front of you that are you can't gonna, gonna, that they're going to generate resources. And when you trigger one, it'll it'll generate the resources, but then it'll also trigger out underneath them in kind of a pyramid. Like pattern. Imperial Miners. <clears throat> Maybe. Um, but Imperial it is, Miners, is, it's called Imperial Miners. Follow the Mountain King. Well, yeah, two. it's a Follow the Mountain King game. Um, but it's just such a clever system, and the whole game is built around that, really. It's, it's, it's such a satisfying mechanism that everything else is good, too, but if it didn't have that, it wouldn't be quite as high in my list because all the other stuff is, is fine, but it's nothing special. Yeah. That resource... Generation system is special. And it's interesting. The new That's a hallmark of this series. It absolutely is. That Fall of the Mountain King 
also has a different but very innovative and very cool. All right, well, we need a third one. We need, yeah, you're right. Call of the Mountain King, the fall of the Mountain King. Call of the Mountain King. Oh. I was going to say the mall of the Mountain King. <laughs> That's it's a in the shopping, shopping and It's in the future. 90% 90, 90 of the stores will be closed. Got dark. Uh, yeah, Hall of the Mountain King, very good game. Oh, Mike. Wow. I'm sorry. Last time I got into a mall, there's like no stores open. Go to Dolphin Mall. That one's open. That's true. That's a good one. Also, you can't buy anything because it's no. all it's too expensive. It's all very, very expensive. Hall of the Mountain King, very, very clever No game. rabbit trails today, folks. Nope. <laughs> Not at all. We're good. We're, we can bring this in in under an hour. Sure. <laughs> My number 68 is a fairly modern game, one that I just heard from a couple of folks on the cruise was still hard to get, apparently, Okay. which is unfortunate, Oh, I better but it know. is worth getting. This is Vagrant Song. <gasps> oh, Vagrant Song is an excellent campaign game. I'm not a particularly big proponent of campaign games. I mm -hmm. do think they are, um, well, they compete for space a yeah, lot, in both yeah. literal space, but also just sort of gaming time and space. This is one that where I find these scenarios are quick enough, mm. sort of contained enough, yeah. you know, that you can play a while, play one, two, three, pack up your things, put that away, come back to it after a few months, and pretty much jump back in. You don't need to remember kind of the story, quote yeah. unquote. Yeah, it's yeah. not like, wait, why is this here? Yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah. What, what happened uh, four games ago that yeah. changed this over here? You're still on the haunted it's, train. It's episodic. <laughs> right. It's very episodic, yeah. and for this game, that works. Really like the theme, love the look, I love the style, the vibe of this one, the, the Hanes and you being this wandering vagrant, and the whole thing is charming. It really it's is. It's a very charming game with some neat ideas in it. Vagrant Song, modern classic, I believe, <laughs> is what Mike would call this I one. Might. Fair or unfair, too, this is one of those situations where a very established publisher mm -hmm. that I paid zero attention to before now has become, I'm like, wow. I would go by Malifaux's booth every year. Weird. Oh, weird, sorry, not Malifaux. Yeah, weird. weird. They made Malifaux as well. I'd go by Weird's booth at Gen Con every year and be like, that's a neat looking booth, but I don't have any interest in any of these Mostly games. Mostly did, well, miniatures games right. and Malifaux, RPGs, right. 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 And this is a rock solid modern hobby board game. Yeah. You know, so pretty cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to uh, stop by the booth at Gen Con and see what's new. Absolutely. Mm. All right, my number 68 is. Just a classic. Um, it's actually been on my list for nine years, and I'm still waiting for the third edition of this game. Second edition's fine. Or someone to reprint this thing. Mm. And that is Battle Lore Second Edition. Okay. Okay. It's so much fun and such good stuff. And we got a nice painted edition in the library and everything. But my word, why is this like, this is sitting in limbo land. I blame the current state of fantasy flight games and the refusal to print anything mm -hmm. other than Marvel mm -hmm. Champions. Shame! Bing. Ooh, Marvel re Bing. theme of Battle Lore. Marvel Lore. Marvel Lore. Please don't make that fantasy Do it. Fight. Make it a double Marvel dog. Lore. Dare you. We have just a yeah. bunch of shield agents. What are you scared of? Money? <laughs> <laughs> Do it. I would actually. I would buy that so fast. <laughs> All right. But anyway, Battle Lore, it's. It's very similar. It's based on the Memoir 44, the Command and Color system, mm -hmm. uh, but actually lets you take monsters out and fight with them, which is pretty fun. Okay. So. okay. What World War Hulk? A uh, World War Hulk theme Ooh. battle war. But Hulk mm -hmm. would never be able to be. Well, I guess you have to bring Sentinel. You know what? Stop trying to trick me into being nerdy. Mm -hmm. All right. Gotcha. <laughs> the people's choice. Where are we at? There we are. Okay. The people's 68. Oh, ASMR. Ooh. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> you can't pronounce I'm it? Dude, it's a male deal. Teotihuacan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the sultriest Teotihuacan I've ever heard. City of Gods. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this was 79 last year uh, and 40 the year before that. So this is the fourth year it's on the People's Choice list. So it looks like it's it's on to stay for a while. And like I said, it's more popular than Zulkin, like by two. Mm. But that is something. These are the, I think, the only two of these games that make the list at all. Okay. These are still the ones I think that kind of hold up over time. I mean, This series, people were very excited about it. And there's still people who are, and I give them that. Um, thank you, Peter Bat. Um... 
but also give it to yourself. Uh, I <laughs> 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 uh, love it. This no longer, if I said there's a new tea going, game coming, very few people would get that excited about sure. it. Right, but yeah. this game was so good mm -hmm. that it, they carried the next two by themselves. That's true. And it's amazing to me that they've had all of these expansions and everything because in the base game itself is so much. You know what I mean? I very rarely go off of the pre-printed stuff on the board. I don't even add in the other stuff half the time. I know. There's so, so much in there that you can mix it up I with. I feel that way with a lot of games. In fact, and thank you, Claudio. Third day in a row. I think that if you have something where you, there's stuff pre-printed on the board and then you can add stuff, then let me add that later. Don't start by telling I me to agree. put it on the board. I, it always bugs me. Me too. Like I this, agree. the pre-printed board is fine. If you want more later, that's I get the. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway. But no, I agree. To be fair, like again, unless you're playing the same game a lot in a row, you bring up that board, and if it's on there, I'm like, oh, it's good. It's yeah. fine. I don't it's good think I ever know. played I don't this need game to change without it. the pre-printed stuff yeah. because right. I feel like it's a deep enough game anyway. I agree. Now the tech tiles, I'll change. Sure. I mean that makes sense. Yeah. All right. That was 70 or 68. Eight. 67 is a game that is very much, I think I'm about the only person that seems to talk about it. It is not very well it. known. It is not very heavily played. It, it was a Kickstarter that was then, I think, only really available from the publisher's website. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a game it. that you Tom is very, very wrong about. He doesn't like it. I like it a whole lot. It's my 67th favorite game. It is Dawn of Peacemakers. Yeah, yeah. This is a game that is a cooperative game. And kind of the hook about this game is that you are there's two kind of warring factions that play out on a central board. And this is an episodic type of a game as well. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to it be. It doesn't have to be. You can play it just one off, but you can also play through like an Whoa. episodic thing, right? That's what that looks like? It looks like a war game, right? It, it looks is like, a war game! It, it, it looks like Memoir 44. However, the, again, the hook is that you've got these two sides, and they're slightly asymmetric. One is a more powerful side, and one is a, a less powerful side. And your job, as the player, is to be a go-between to go to both sides and to try to convince them to stop fighting. Which in real life would involve me going and being like, hey, blah, 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 and then go to you, hey, blah, blah, blah. That's not how it works in this game. Sometimes it does. Sometimes you may have to go over and give some food poisoning to one side so they get a little bit weakened and they can't fight. But the idea is not to get... What? <laughs> you're not trying to have one side wipe out the other. You're trying to get them to the point where they're both so sick of fighting each other that they just be like, all right, we're done. That is what it is. You're it's trying to make, they're fighting each other, yes. and you're manipulating the fight to try to make it as even as possible. Right, so that they both okay. just say like, okay, we're I not going to fight it. anymore. It's a, it's, it's a very audacious idea. It's a um, weird idea. It's a weird idea, and I love it. It's a very singular vision, right? Yeah. And the fact that it's done in a game that looks and plays with some very clever card play. I mean, this is not just a gimmick game at all. It's a solid game. But the, the conceit behind it, the idea behind it is so unique and so cool that it takes traditional wargaming and throws it on its head. It turns it into a cooperative game, basically. You know, you might like it because you like game. every other game from this company. I do, I do, and to be fair, having played Lands of Galzer recently, I'm, I'm more interested in trying this. Yeah, yeah. I'd be I, happy to let, let you borrow mine. It's no, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> what, Lands of Galzer? No, oh, he's this? already got it. Of uh, Donna Peacemaker. Oh, I, I just kicked it out of the library, didn't I? Did you really? I didn't even know it was in the library that long. It was. Oh, okay. Well, okay. it's a terrific game. I might grab game. it and look at it. Well, you got to go find it. Yeah, it's like I'm assuming. He back buried there. it in the backyard. Yeah, did you like burn it or something? <laughs> what do you mean? Like... <laughs> no, I just don't know where it is. Am I getting uh -huh. warmer? Thank you, Garrett. Okay, here I go. Here I go. Here I go. Here 67, I go. 67. Okay. 67 is one of Mike Delicio's favorite games of all time. Yeah. And I agree with the man. He knows what's up. Okay? He was there when the first episode came out. <laughs> Do I like it? Thunderbirds. <laughs> You're so mean. <laughs> no, Thunderbirds is um, a cooperative game from Matt Leacock, Mr. Pandemic himself. Mm -hmm. And this one is an interesting twist on Pandemic, I would say. It's not a Pandemic game. No. But it is cooperative, and it does several things that feel Pandemic-y while throwing a whole lot of that away and changing it up. My favorite part of this game is probably how much more of a logistics puzzle it is 
than pandemic. Mm -hmm. In pandemic, there's a little bit of swing around Iceland and then I'll meet you over here and then there. While we're there, we can trade a thing and whatever. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. This game is 80% that. Yes. This game is all about you need to jump in Thunderbird 2 and make it over to Australia because I need to end here and then bring this machine. And if we're both there, you get to roll a die and get a bonus to try to complete something. Cool. We did that. Next turn. Now we have to jump into the thing and go to the rocket, <laughs> go, to go to the moon and do the... <laughs> right. There's a lot of that. So it's incredibly cooperative. It's, yeah. it's very interesting. It's puzzly as all get out. And yet, it's kind of light. It's yeah. sort of like you move around, roll some dice, and oh no, I bust. And uh, get some tokens that you cash in for a re-roll or an extra card. It's it's snappy. Yeah, it's weird. If you've played Pandemic, it's it simultaneously is familiar and then feels nothing like Pandemic. Yeah. So. Yeah. And again, I think as far as being a fan of the theme, I'm sure being a fan helps. But I you am don't need not it. someone who's p very familiar with this at all. In fact, when I first played it, I had no idea what it was. Mm -hmm. And you can still enjoy it. You know. Good Thunderbirds. choice. Thunderbirds Good is fantastic. Choice. Tom, it's a fine choice. Do you like it? No. Um, Man, I'm going to give you food poison. <laughs> that's, 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 number 67 it works. It works. was 59 last year, but the year before that it was 67. This is a game I suspect could possibly be on Z's list. Maybe not, but he, does like this. he likes every other game it's from this company. It's my 101. It is Automania. Oh, this is a good game, I Tom. Tom. I this really like game. this game, despite the fact that it looks like a kid's app from a low, discount company. Mm -hmm. um, Automania is a game in which it's a worker placement game. I like the, the, the gist is you can put it out workers and then take something from that row or column. Mm -hmm. And then if someone else wants to go there, they put more workers than you. Your leftover workers can be used as money and points. Mm -hmm. And then you build cars. You're just building cars the whole game and then selling cars for points and or money. That's it. Very simple, but a lot of fun. I've always had very good response from teaching this game. I, I shouldn't have been as thrown off by the look of it as I was. I was. I don't blame you. I actually. was actively avoiding it because of that, but mm -hmm. I, I played it. You know, I, did we play it live or did we just play it? We here? might have played it live. Yeah, I really I think we played it live. I really enjoyed it. It was a very very solid game. Um, perfect weight too. I felt like mm -hmm. there's definitely enough game there, but I, I felt like I got it basically right after the teach. Well, I feel like at this point we know the company of Porta yeah. enough. That's true. To know that that look is a little bit of a uh, misnomer, it I is. guess. It, it throws you off. It does. That's just kind of their look. All right, cool. the people's choice. The people's choice, number oh. 67, oh. is Chronicles of Crime. It was 78 last year. I'm only doing these voices for a very brief time. I see, time. That. I see yeah. that. It's like a little almost bouge. <laughs> it's a tease. <laughs> um, very popular game. I mean, what else is there to say? Lucky Duck, this is their... They're, the game that put them on the map for everybody really mm -hmm. did. Oh, I mean, they did a lot of little games based on apps. Right. And they found out, hey, our app-based games are better than that. Mm -hmm. This is better for them, for example, Fruit Ninja. Yes. Well, that's them. They, yeah, yeah they also did that. the uh, Jetpack Joyride. Well, that one was better, actually. Yeah, yeah. But Fruit Ninja, and there was a little zombie zombie wave or zombie with, like, cube zombies. I forget what it was called. I don't remember. That the only not, one I can think of is zombie, zombie gun Gunship. Because I kept getting those ads back in the day. Mm. And now you're going to get them again because you bet your phone's somewhere Which in this room. Yep. Zombie gunship. <laughs> Free money. <laughs> Chronicles Crime, very popular game. Your number 67. My number 66 is a game that... Uh, took the same spot last year, so it's very, very steady. And this is a game that apparently... Well, not apparently. It just came out with a new expansion that is supposed to be fantastic, according to one Mr. Thomas Vassell. I haven't played it so yet. So apparently, okay. But it's not a fact. If, if uh, I, I like the base game this much, I can't wait to try the expansion. Is it Qe? It, it is indeed Qe. This is a game I've Ooh, been Quee. hoping that <laughs> I was hoping that Z will play this at some point. Although, again, at this point, it's been talked up so much. That right. You're we have no. It. We have no chance with so, Z on this game. No, 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 you might. I hate every moment of it. I might like it. I'm honestly not. There's a lot of games that I've not played uh, and I'm not avoiding. I'm not yeah. like, oh, I just haven't played it. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, I'm slightly avoiding this one. I don't think I'll like it. Yeah, and I walked by some people actually on the cruise mm -hmm. playing. 
and I glanced down at the table, mm -hmm. and they had these little boards, I guess, everywhere, and yeah. one of them for sure said 2.3 and then a B. <laughs> I'm like, jeez, so Actually, stupid. I think I taught that group. <laughs> the very first bit was like, 1.6 million. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's going to be one of those games. Right. I, I hate wait to, that. I usually wait till turn two before the we go to is, the millions. It's just That's so stupid. It seems like it, but it just works. I know I know. it's it, it's a gimmicky. A hundred percent is gimmicky, yeah. but it creates such a fun experience. I mean, there's just something about the idea of you're not constrained by particular values, right? You can, and, and again, you're going to reach some kind of a stasis at some point, but it's this idea of you can really put whatever you want you can always write a nice little note to the other person, too, oh. that may or may not be uh, profane when you hand it over <laughs> what? to them. What? That's the way I play the game. I might be interested now. Yeah, that's right. Let me, Dearest Let me just say Z. that I'm not always, uh, you know, putting dollar values on there when I when I, I like to talk to you about problem. my bathtub experience. But this is, an, this is basically a, uh, no, $1 an million auction, dollars. No. <laughs> an auction style <laughs> game where you can bid any amount you want. You can bid $1, you can bid $1 million. It doesn't matter. The, the game still works. The you idea, print the money. Right. The idea, though, is that at the end of the game, whoever spent the most money can't win. Right? And so that in it, just that in itself is enough of a self-regulation to make the game You do work. like the... Not for sale. Um, the other one, yeah. The Canizia. Oh, um... Uh, high society. High yes. society. Yes. That's yeah. that same concept. It right. is, and that one comes with pre-printed amounts of money, and I know <laughs> what it is. Society just... of Architects has that in it. <laughs> yes, a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It just seems kind of goofy. The idea of ah, yes. say whatever you want. I don't like the valleys going that high for no good reason. That's all. It's just a bit of silliness, and I get yeah. if you're not into, if you're not feeling for a silliness, then maybe you won't. But it works. It all really right. works. That's right. My number sixty-six QE, a game that I had. Very little interest in when I was taught it. All right, maybe I will. I'm Especially bet with those little notes, you'll be right. Twelve million <laughs> on Z's next pick. There we go. That I will like it. I think you'll like it, Tom. And I'll put and it I... in the Dice Tower Library. Automatic it's, guaranteed. It's in the library. Oh. Mike likes it. Oh. This is an easy one to like. To be fair, this is Parks. Oh, there you go. It was on my list. Crossover. Yeah, so Parks is, you guys again... Both like this. Mm -hmm. I like it, but you guys like it way more than I, I do. I think it's great. It's beautiful, it's approachable, yep. it is one of those games, for a, not for everybody, but for a lot of people. Yeah. This one's digestible. Very, very pleasant. It's Mike talked about it already quite a bit. It's got that um, one-way road thing. Mm -hmm. Jump ahead as far as you want, get a little bonus, buy up the park cards, which I guess you know, is supposed to be you visiting the parks. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's just a good one. And I like the little expansions they've put out for it. The last one I thought was a little less impactful, I guess, yeah. than the first expansion, Nightfall. I think that's a better one. What but about the memory game? The memory game is uh, a memory game that is very attractive. <laughs> uh-huh. And it's memory. Yep. <coughs> Parks. All right, I, I'm embarrassed here. I made a dreadful mistake. Oh, boy. My number 66 was not on the list last year, but it should have been. Mm. Okay, that And happens. that's because when I went through, I went through all the new games, mm -hmm. and I went through all the games that were on the list, but I forgot that I had played a reprint of an older game, which is how this one slid through. I never played this game when it originally came out, but I played the reprint, which came out last year. And uh, thank you, Frank. Thank you. Um, Ranayo. Maybe we'll do that someday, Frank. But this game, three-letter game, Iki. Oh. Okay. Oh, thank you, Daniel, from Romania. Romania is now my favorite country. All right. Over both Poland and Chile. 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 Mm -hmm. And um, Jan. Thank you, Jan. Mm -hmm. Okay, but back to Iki. So Iki is a rondelle game, essentially, yeah. where you're moving someone through a Japanese village. Uh, you can see it here in this picture in the middle. And... Each place you stop at gives you different things. You know, you're buying stuff. But the game is such a tight, interesting game. You get to put the stores in those spots, and you're hoping other people shop at your store, or you can shop at your own store. You're getting different resources. You can spend um, uh, sandals to move farther. You pick how far you're going to move each turn, but right. also that determines turn order. But I'll tell you what. This game has the best, maybe, in my opinion, where everything's printed on the board. I don't have to look up the rule book to see, because I'm like, what are the player steps? Da, 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 da. When does this happen in this round? It's all printed on the board. It's beautiful. Yep. Beautiful. Like There's only that. one game um, that does that better, but we'll talk about that one later. It's also a very beautiful game, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of fun. I really like Iki. So. Solid game. They just announced a, an expansion for okay. it. <gasps> what does it do, though? 
You saw it. We talked about it in the news. It it's a layover that you put on that part of the board so you don't know what the steps are That's anymore. That's right. It covers the steps on the board. Yeah. You make your own steps. It's a dry erase. Step I can't one, tell if either one of you is win. joking or not. He's not joking. joking. There is a new expansion. There is a new expansion, but... And everything after that was a lie? Yes, yes correct. Good. Yes. <laughs> oh, good, because that sounded so terrible. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I have you not You would played. think after that so many years I would stop getting got stop by these guys. Stop listening, think, but you'd listening be wrong. okay? All right, uh, <laughs> people's choice. People's yes. choice. What are we on? 66. The people's choice. The people's choice is... Oh. Oh, okay. It's 66. It was 64 last year. 63. Very, very consistent. <laughs> Although it was 111 the year before that, but no, we'll forget that year. It's Targi. Oh. A three-way crossover with me, Z, and, and the people. I haven't does, mentioned this. It's a three-way crossover <laughs> with me, Z, and the people. Okay, uh, okay. Fair enough. Targi's a super solid It's a great two-player game. I think it's. it might be the only Cosmos two-player game to make the people's choice stop. Maybe Lost City's on here, I don't know, but yeah. this one is this one did not get huge love when it first came out, but it just kept growing and growing. It's been a slow burn and that and it's gotten an expansion. Also they keep it in Very print, good which expansion. doesn't hurt. Cosmos does not keep many of these games in print. Yes. And it, isn't it true that like the designer, this is their only game? I think they have one more game. Oh do they? Okay. In only German, though. Okay. It gotcha. really bugs me. He wants to play it. I do want to. Actually, I was very tempted a couple of years ago at Essen. Yeah. I saw a second-hand copy. Yeah. And I was very tempted to get it and just paste it up. Just, just try to... Yeah. But it's a lot of text. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's move on! I don't know what that meant. It's a little bit sad to me that my number 65 has dropped as much as it has, but it has. It's down 39 points. It's because you dropped it into the bathtub. I did not. Um, this one probably wouldn't work as well in the bathtub. But this, you haven't tried yet, though. Uh, that's, yeah, there's no proof. This is true. Uh, okay, the proof is in the bathtub pudding. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Have you ever had pudding. bathtub pudding? <laughs> no, I've had... Delicious. <laughs> bathtub moonshine. <laughs> That is a thing. My number 65. Oh, did we hit 350? Yay! Woo! What? Awesome. Thank you, folks. What does that mean? Oh, we're doing some more. We're doing some more game and game talks. Game and talks. Let's see if we can keep We're going to do a game and talk on this next game Mike says. I'd be happy to. My oh, number boy. 65 is Mass Mora Dungeons of Arcadia. You messed up. Oh, no. You got <laughs> got. You this, got wait, got. This, I'm sorry. This is. Mike, I. I appreciate so much of your list. This is trash. <laughs> what is trash about? Now, here's the thing. You play it. I tend to play this cooperatively. I know you played it competitively. It is not as good competitively as it is cooperatively. Right. you got to cooperate I play and it listen. as a cooperative, mostly solo, dungeon crawl game. I really like the, 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 the feel of the world of Arcadia, right? So it's got that kind of familiarity that I like. I, I do like the little chibi characters. I always enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. um, and... The thing that you Show me don't the like, characters in that picture. It's, well, a, it's, right a, right over there. That it's a cube. You can barely see it. Well, that that's that, stupid. That's what I say. The thing that you like the least about the game is my favorite element, which is that the monsters are dice. Okay. And when it, so they'll have different uh, you know kind of levels of monsters. So it's a level one monster. You get a level one die out of the bag. You roll it, and whichever one it comes up, it's going to be that monster. Okay. You know it'll be a level one monster, but you don't know which one. So far, so good. I like that idea. Okay. It's really good. So Otherwise, does Tom. Yeah. And a lot of other and games. And a lot of other things. I know. Okay. I don't like it in this game. But Hypocrite. I, but I like it in I this I am. One. And I like the idea that you're rolling your own dice that are your actions that you then kind of program down Love and you decide that. what you're going to do. Look, this game doesn't get a lot of love. I understand that I may be the outlier here. I don't care. I like the game as a solo, cooperative dungeon crawl. You're not allowed to like games other people don't That's like. That's correct. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm breaking the rules, baby. Because my number not? 65 <laughs> is Mass Mora, Dungeons of Arcadia, and if you don't like the game, you're wrong. What I, do you not like about it, Tom? <sighs> okay, well, I don't like that the monsters are nice. I really don't like That's that. That's weird, because you like that. Not, Is it because you expected a miniatures game? I don't like games where monsters are dice and the heroes are miniatures. Why? Who cares? So heroes, I don't know why, Roy. <laughs> so okay. if the heroes were also like dice, you'd be yeah. okay with that? It would be... <sighs> you know, plastic melts. <laughs> 
It's not just that. This game is very slow and ponderous compared so to... So are you. My number 60, uh, you need five. to play this again, Tom. It is why is this game not even a little bit popular? If I'm if I'm so wrong and it's uh, so amazing, why is it not being played everywhere? And don't use any other game on my list to counter... <laughs> I'm just saying, if you, you, <laughs> don't have, that. you don't have to like it, but but the, it's not slow. It's super fast. But mm -hmm. whatever. It's fantastic. It's 65. I was dropping like a stone. And all right, the next time Mike mentions this game, I'm going to be all... I'll be like, that sounds amazing, Mike. There you go. I That's must be remembering it incorrectly. That's correct. <laughs> You're incorrect. That's correct. No, look, it's not for everybody. I like it. Although it is unfortunately going down because there are other games that are kind of taking oh, it. Oh, you asked me what I like the least about it, and this is actually not a joke. Um, I really hate the fact that they put Arcadia Quest characters in here. Yeah, they so have, that if you want to stick them in Arcadia right. Quest, there's only one miniature. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to take it out of one game and use it in the other game. A, I really dislike when companies do that. It's a that. crossover. Yeah, they have a crossover pack. It's like, yeah, you can play your, you can play Arcadia Quest characters in this. You can play these characters in Arcadia Quest if really? you want to. Yeah. Okay. So. Eh. And I love Arcadia Quest, but I don't want to buy Mazmora to get some new heroes. I get that. I get that. I get it, too. I understand that's a marketing decision. Even though I really like the fact that they did that for uh, uh, Mass of Darkness, too. Oh, that's true. But then I just... Took out the other games and put the stuff in. <laughs> Come on, D, rescue me from my floundering! Rescue me! My 65 is uh, in the same line as Targi. It's one of those Cosmos oh, two player wow. games. Uh, this is. Crocodile Pool Party. Not that one. <laughs> it's one of the good ones. Uh -huh. Okay, let me see. It's Let's... also one of the older ones. Technically, this is a reissue of one of the Zeus older and ones. Hera? No, Hera and Zeus. Hera and Zeus. No, Balloon Cup is fine. This is a very robust, one of the more robust ones, I would say, until Targi came along. Season Clay Petra. That one's not that big. Uh, yeah, this no. is Asante, Jumbo. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Jumbo is technically, you know, part. Jumbo. the first one is called Jumbo. Asante was a reissue, sort of slight reworking of that. Jumbo 2.0. Two-player only game, like I said, an economic game in which you are trying to race to, I think, 60 gold nuggets. Mm. And you do so by buying and selling, largely. You're buying resources, goods, you're buying cheaply, putting them on your display shelves, selling those things, uh, messing with your opponent, or giving yourself special bonuses. It's a pretty interactive game. It, it can definitely get a little nasty yeah. in the confrontation department. But what I really like about it is how flavorful the game is, how, yeah, how much fun really, stuff is going mm, it's on. It's a really know? good game. It is it's good. so neat. Uh, every part of this game is neat. Something as simple as drawing cards at the beginning of your turn. You don't just draw a card and then take turns. You draw. And if you don't like the card you got, you can discard that and for one of your actions, of which you only have five for the entire turn, you could draw again. Hmm. So you can go fishing for a bit at the penalty of once it's your turn proper, you don't have as much you can do, sure. which is really neat. Again, yeah, the, the buying, the selling, you need cards for all the stuff. It's beautiful. Also, it's full of great artwork. This, mm. this game is, I don't know, it's clever. It's got a lot of interesting stuff. And I'm not someone who likes games with um, a big uh, economic aspect. Yeah, yeah. But this one, for me, gets a pass. Because of everything else going sure. on, you know? So, yeah, I really like it. Asante, wonderful two-player game. My number 65 is almost a crossover with Mike, except I picked a different game from the same company. Okay. Of Simon. Oh, I got you. And this was a big game. It was 54 last year. It's kicked its younger brother or older brother to the curb. Blood Rage has fallen off my list Whoa. completely. Sorry, guys. But Rising Sun is still there. Oh, my. I do like Rising Sun. Um, okay. A lot of fun. This was on the People's Choice? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, I know that Blood Rage is more popular, but this one, I like the action pick selection a lot in this one. Mm -hmm. I like the combat. It's a funky combat system that I've only ever seen in uh, Ignacy's game, too. Uh, it's not Rumble. his game, but... Um, well, this company's Grand game. Grand Rodex game. Grand Rodex game. Uh, oh, uh, Cry Havoc. Cry Havoc. Cry Havoc they have and similar let loose combat the rising systems. Sun. <laughs> I love the miniatures in this game. I like the pseudo, very small in the game, but there is some diplomacy I yeah, enjoy. A little bit, yeah. So, yeah. I think my biggest issue with this game is how much that diplomacy was sold as actual diplomacy. I agree, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sure, but, then but you I'm play not. And it's like, is it really? Yeah, it's I, just, you force it if you want to force it. But. Yeah, I like Rising Sun. I think there's player count issues. 
and I do think that the the negotiation isn't as high up there as it should be. But I do think that that combat system, as convoluted as it is, is really smart. Like, it is very super interesting. Smart. It's an interesting game that, unfortunately, for me, again, it was tainted a little bit in my eyes from the way it was pitched. Yeah. But I do like it. It's mm -hmm. not in my top 100, but I do like it. I do, too. When was the last time you played this? I'm curious. Has it been a while? Or have you played it kind of recently? A couple maybe. of years, yeah. And I still like it. That's despite me not playing it for a yeah, while. Yeah, yeah. This is one that needs to come back to the table. I'd love to try it I again. would play it again, for been sure. A while. Of course, yeah. Let's do it. Let's All right, it let's oh. talk about the people's choice. Let's talk about love, baby. 65 is a crossover juice. with Mike Enzi. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Horrified. Oh, my goodness me. Oh. No. Oh, I'm scared. I was a monster. Not a very good one. <laughs> I was, oh, was, was singing. Hey, 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 hey. My vocal cords, so I'll just stay over here with my mellifluous. Horrified, number 65. Mellifluous? It was 41 last Heights. year and 38 the year before that, one, that but this is definitely one of the most popular games to come out from Ravensburger. Do we think they're going to have another one? I hope they, I kind of hope they do. I think they're going to do an expansion to American Monsters. I don't think American Monsters sold well at all. I don't think so. I think so. they're not going to have another one then. Okay, okay. I guess European you the, Monsters, you which just doesn't the, work. The you know IP I mean? thing might be an issue, but yeah, I wonder, I mean, it this works, is a I very guess. popular It's system. okay, though, because I'm okay with our fight being That's a standalone true. game. I agree. Sure, I would have liked to have them added, who do they not add? The Hunchback? The... The Blob? The Blob. The Blob? Uh, the Blob would be great. Like, what about Wolverine? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I think the next one is going to be Horrified X-Men Mansion Attack. <laughs> what would be interesting, honestly, is if they did a version like the fan-made version that we have in the library. If they did one which is based off the I thought about that, but movies. they would have to pick... If they did all that... All from one studio. It would have to be all from one studio, which yeah. they could probably pull off. Yeah. I mean, Universal... Blumhouse. Blumhouse. Oh, that'd be amazing. Blumhouse. Horrified Blumhouse would work. And it would do very well. I think it would, actually. Yeah, I agree. That might be what they do. Yeah, I could see that. But Horrified I agree Blumhouse. that... Blumhouse. That would be interesting. That would be. I wonder who the parent company of Blumhouse is. I, it could work. It I could definitely know. work. I don't know. Good pick, people. Paramount, this, maybe. All right. Yeah. Anyway, Horrified, your number 65. My number 64 is almost a crossover with Tom Vassell. Is but it it's a different Simon game. Is it Blood Rage? It is Blood Rage. My number 64 is Blood Rage. So <laughs> There's a lot of Simon yeah, right is, here, right? guys. I'm, the, I'm the outlier in the studio. You Rise. nailed it. Mm. <laughs> you got it. You, yeah, that's right. Oh, my gosh, First Vassell. Time. I get yelled at enough about it. All right. <laughs> I think I'm the only gosh, person I'm who likes Rising you. Sun better than Blood Rage in the studio. In the world, yes. Um, <laughs> no, that's not true. Come on. <laughs> Blood you like Baz Mora. Shut up. I, that's, you're, you, that's a fair point. Um, the reason why I like Blood Rage more is that I like drafting. It's straight up, this is a drafting game, first and foremost. You've got all these great-looking minis on this board, and yes, there's combat. That's all trash. It's, it's a drafting game. It's a game. drafting game. This is game. basically Sushi Go. It is Sushi Go. It's Sushi Go in, uh, in Yggdrasil. Um, now, there is an issue where if you are playing with people of varying uh, knowledge of the game, it could be rough. Because if you know the cards and other people don't know the cards, you're going to have Big time. point swings of maybe hundreds of points. And that can feel yeah. very dis you know, discouraging to somebody who's new yeah, to the game. Yeah, that, that so, I think that's actually a flaw of the game. And is, that's a weird thing to say it's a flaw. Because again, if you play a game more, you should be better at yeah. it. But but this is a drastic, the equalizing in this right. game is the yeah, it's, it's not, not it's there. Not, if you're new happening. and you're playing with pros, you gonna get creamed. You will get you'll get lapped most likely. So that is an issue. But the game itself, I remember the first time that I played it, mm -hmm. I was just gobsmacked. I was like, I've never played a game like this. Never. And I played a drafting game, but just the the, the kind of the juxtaposition of a very simple drafting mechanism that is driving what's on this board was just mind-blowing to me. Now, it's not as novel as it was. I still enjoy playing it. I maybe will play it once a year, and that's enough. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoy that one play a year. Still on my list. How long will it last? I don't know. It's still there. What was it before? This has dropped a bit. It's down 32 points. So it may not make the list <coughs> next year. If I play it one more time this year, I bet it'll stay. My number 64, 
Blood Rage. My number 64 is uh, actually a classic. It's mm. from the year 2000. Ooh. In the year to 2000. That's 99. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Okay. Uh, give us one, one more hint. I'm <laughs> one more hint. Mm -hmm. It's from a designer that I used to like. Now I kind of generally really hate. Wow. Blue Moon. No, I like Kinesia. Kinesia. That, that was, was 2004. That was a backward slap at Mike. This is Citadel's. Oh, that's true. Fiduity. You definitely have swung around on this man. Uh, for mm. duty, I'm sorry, but. Look, a lot of the other French designers have just been coming out with hit after hit, and yeah. they've evolved. Right. That's what it is. Yeah. If Duty was doing the same stuff in 2000 <laughs> when this came out than he is doing now 23 years later. A lot of chaos. A lot of, like, bluffing. How mm -hmm. many bluffing games does that man have? But oh, anyway, yeah. having said all that, I think Citadel is, does hold up. I do think it's fantastic. I, to be fair, I think the new edition, the one I'm showing you here, which is technically the one available now, is the way to go. There's mm. so much fun content in yeah. there. Alternate character powers. If you are someone who does have an issue with the assassin or the thief, you don't have to anymore. You can change that. Lots of fun building abilities that you can swap in and out. Go with the, you know, make the set you want to play with. Yeah. And then you just play with that set. But the core ideas, the fun, the quick turn to turn action of the game, I really enjoy. That whole drafting a character, you don't know who I am, sometimes I'm trying to hide who I am, and then when it's your turn, grab a couple coins or a couple cards, and maybe play one. Next. That's it. I really like that. I like that flow. It doesn't feel like an old game. It does not. It yeah, really I doesn't. Agree. Yeah. This has, this has uh, aged well. Yeah, and I like Fiduti best when he's working with somebody, mm -hmm. right? Like, I, I much prefer Mission Red Planet to Citadel, for sure. example, but sure. it uses a similar feel. Yeah, First no, time I, I played agree. Citadels, I want to say, was last year. We really? played it here. I had never I played I it before. I need to play this again. It's been a while. Yeah. I like yeah. it, though. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin, for gifting out a whole pile of memberships to people. Yeah, no kidding. Thank you. I didn't even know you could do that on YouTube. I, this is news Wait, to what? me. What did I miss? He made other people members. like a whole pile of You them. can do that? Yeah. yeah. Gifts are well, I guess you can boys. now. It's Christmas in January. That's right. All right, my number 64 is just like Rising Sun if it was about rabbits. This is the oh, fifth year wow. this has been on my list from Richard Garfield, mm. Bunny Kingdom. I wish I liked this game more. I love drafting a lot. If drafting's in a the game, there's a good chance I'm going to like it. And this, this is all about drafting. And in fact, I still yeah. <coughs> think I like this better than the cat game. And that boggles my the mind. The cat my hat? Isle of Cats. Oh. Because they have very similar drafting things. I don't understand how you can't like this. I like Isle of Cats, too. I'll explain why. It's very simple. I like the drafting. I hate the end game scoring. It's it just is. math. It. It's just math. It's, it's, I hate it. I hate it. I math is it. not for everyone. It's not the math. It's that you've no. got to go through the whole thing. It's just no. convoluted. Math it's is for everyone. It's Kids, if you're watching right now, you need math in your life. Anyway, I I, Math is bad, I really do. I love the scoring. The number of resources times the number of castle turrets. That's it. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. I'll tell you, I played this game. The first time I played was with the original board. Yes, oh, I heard it like, 100 times while we were playing. Too small. Yeah, I did not, you did not hear that when we were playing because that was the only board. I will tell you, I've never played on the big board, so maybe that would help. It really might it help. It sucked. Ah! I hated it. You couldn't see anything. Yeah, that's my thing. It was like and maybe I'll come back and be like, "This is better now that it's right. been corrected." Right, because Richard originally, Garfield, you know, he's a brilliant designer. I like drafting games. This should be a game that's right up my alley. Maybe mm -hmm. I really would try with a big board and see if it helped. Because I, I just was so annoyed with the scoring that it soured my whole experience. Yeah, clearly a good game. All right. All right. Number 64 has been on the People's Choice list for 11 years. That's a it long was time. once number two. Hey, oh, sit around the campfire. It was 52. Children. It's slowly dropping, but it's still very popular. They just came out with a cooperative version of it, which I saw a lot of people playing on the cruise. Oh, and this, I is know what this is King of Tokyo. Another Richard Garfield game crossover with me and the people. Wow. Oh. That's two Garfield games back to back. That's, That's right. Double Garfield. Yeah, King of Tokyo. I mean, I still remember when we first. When we first did the People's Choice list, 
This was 18, and I was like, ooh, I like that, because it's nowhere near the top 100 on Board Game Geek. Right, right. Because this is too light for a lot of yes. people. I don't care. This game is fantastic. This is a game that I would give like, as a gift to, like, if I if I knew some kid, you know, who was, that I was buying a gift from him and his family, right. I think they would like this game. Yeah, this game, Base safe, King of Tokyo. It's, right. a, it's a fairly safe bet, yeah. This game is not on my top 100, but this is one of those games where I cannot imagine a scenario where somebody, if I'm ready to play a game, if someone says, do you want to play King of Tokyo? I can't imagine a situation where I'd say no. What if you hate those people? Shoot. What if it's to the death? No, I'm more interested now. <laughs> He's a really good King of Tokyo player. I want high stakes in my gaming. It's a really good game. Good choice, people. To the death, Z. <laughs> this is weird that th this section of my list kind of had these kind of bigger style games. We had Mass Mora. We had, stuff, we had yeah. you know, Blood Rage. And 63 is another large troops on a map style game, but it plays so differently to them uh, by a designer that is known for small, little indie card games. You're this a fan. Is, this is his one big game. This is Mezzo by designer John Cloutus. Uh, I mentioned this way back when you mentioned another game, and I said you would, I knew this would be on your list. Yeah, what was the other game? The that was on my list, like a. Uh, There's another game that has some similarities to this that I thought was. I was surprised. Oh, you were, you were talking about probably Lords of Hellas. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I rather play Lords of Hellas over this one, but Lords of Hellas is more Ameritrash. This is more Euro. This is much more Euro, and it's it's just very, very, very clever. The real the, the downside to it is that it can run a bit long. However, the the designer has put out an official shortened variant, so you can okay. you can play it in a slightly shorter time. But it is super clever, very thinky. It 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 looks like a troops on a map game, and technically it is, but it does not play like one. It is much more about having these asymmetrical god powers. You play as these Mesoamerican gods, and you are utilizing those powers of those gods, moving them to vertices on the board. So your god may be controlling one, or you, I don't think it's ever one. It's either two or three regions right. on the board, right. and. The timing, there's some really neat timing elements. Thank you, Nick. Very, very Nick, good. Nick, none of those stretch goals are going to happen. Not going to happen, but we thank the support. Um, I'll do the last one. But yeah, uh, Mezzo is a game that, that I don't think got a whole lot of love. <laughs> I believe it was a, uh, I believe it was a Kickstarter, and I don't know if enough people had a chance to play it. Uh, there were a couple of little production issues, unfortunately, but the gameplay itself is really, really good. Um, I played it last year. Um, Favorite player count for you? Three. Three. I okay. like three. Okay. Yeah. All there right. All right. Mezzo. I got to try this again. Did you play it? I have played it. Okay. I have played it, but I think I played it once or twice. I okay. I don't recall. Yeah. All right. So where are we at? Uh, 63. 63 is Paper Tales for me. And this mm, one still is... Still strong for you. Then. Still strong, but to be fair, this was very high. This was my top ten. Um, oh. So it's dropped a bit. I think it's hard. I keep having a hard time finding other people that like it. It's actually yeah, probably my biggest really problem. Cool. I like it. A lot of people don't seem to enjoy this one. I think that it makes a generally unfavorable first impression. The game feels too short the right. first time you play. Mm -hmm. It's a little tricky. It suffers a little bit when it gets compared to things like you know Seven Wonders or things like that. Yeah. Because it has a decent amount going on in it. But other games that simplify drafting, and by that I mean that are just about the drafting, are going to be a little snappier, are going to be a little easier to internalize. You know, in this one you're drafting, but then you are deploying characters. A front line and a back line. The ones in the front can attack. The ones in the back cannot. They give you symbols for building a specific, you know, building that you want to incorporate. They age. You put a token on them and they age. Next time they age, they die. You need to replace them. And especially that aging thing, yeah. a lot of people go, wait, what? When the game is four rounds long. Right. I get that. That's weird, mm -hmm. you know? But it really works for me. I love it. I love the look. I love the vibe of it. I love that there are so many interesting phases so that you can focus on, I'm going to just blow up my two opponents with combat yep. and get points that way. 
but I'm really not doing so great with building up my infrastructure. And some you can do the opposite of that. You can choose which thing you're building up. I get more gold every round. I get more whatever. I really like this. If you, yeah. again, if you've tried it and you thought, mm, not for me, I would give this one a, another shot. I would try it more than once. I understand that the first impression's a little iffy. Try it again. Yeah, it's good. And I like the graphic design decisions they made, too, because there's different phases in the game, and certain cards will only trigger on a particular mm -hmm. phase. And the way they do it, it makes it easy for the player to know what's happening when. You don't have to yeah. kind of try to remember it. It's all right there. Yeah, yeah, the symbology is solid in it this is. game. Yeah. All right, my number 63 is tied because mm -hmm. four years of my life, I've spent more money on this game than any other game. Interesting. And those years are 1995, 1996, 2021, and 2022. Wow. Okay. This is one game where you did all this? Yes. I'm Seems gonna like guess a collectible that it's, game uh, of some type. I'm going to guess it was... Oh, gosh. It's got to be, right? Yeah. At first, when he said it, I was thinking, what's Overpower? the one? Overpower? Yeah, overpower? it is Overpower. Oh, Overpower. Okay. Be. Overpower, which when wow. I was in the 90s, I love this game. And I still love this game, and I've really got into it in recent years. I have so much of Overpower stuff right now. Yeah. I am slowly hunting down all the cards I'm missing. I'm trying to get you the... Craven. Craven the Hunter. I, I'm still missing a ton. It's a very, very expensive game, so I'm trying to get them. Wow. As, I managed to, to wiggle someone's whole collection out from underneath them in exchange for a ticket to a convention. Um, so there's a master list of cards that you have. Is that a master list? I don't, I'm not, I don't have that master list of cards, okay. but I know what I'm missing. Okay, interesting. That's so, right huh? So that's addiction right there. Yeah. It is addiction. To, well, not, it's not addiction because I actually don't think about it for weeks on end, and then I get... I'm, I'm buying cards in the mail every once in a while they show up. I'm like, Ooh. oh, that's right, overpower. <laughs> do you, who do you play this with? So I'm going to teach Jimmy in a couple of years. Okay, all right. No one, basically, yeah. Shut up! I wasn't asking that as a dig. I was serious. Like, if you love the game this much, I hope you get a chance to play it. I, I, I love the game a lot, but I also love collecting it. I yeah, know that it's I get my it. one, this is my one collectible card game that I'm still in. Okay. That you actually collect, also, right. right? That's the thing. It's the only game I collect like this. Yeah. Well, I've never moved. played what it, about, Tom. We just Maybe moved should... my house. It's the only game I took. You, you know, should teach me this at some point. What about the one that's the, the, right, the I'll build hero clicks or what, the, one that, the one that you make the big, that takes up the terrain? Warhammer? Takes... Heroescape. Heroescape. Do you still collect that? Do you still have that? Well, I don't. It's done. Okay, so you have it all. I have everything for okay. Heroescape in this house somewhere, but right. we're probably going to, except for the pieces that are starting to break now because of the mm. plastic. Yeah. And I don't have this unknown set that was never produced. Okay. By, uh, I'm still mad about Hasbro right. about that. Okay, okay. Right. okay. So my number is 63, Overpower, a really fun CCG that I like a lot. All right. All right. Your number 63. The people. Is War of the Ring. I can't even do a voice for that. You okay. did it. You just did it. You did 63, it. 63. You're an orc. 63. It was 98 last year. And it was Wait, 115 what? the year before that. Wow, it's going up, huh? I know. It was 88 the year before that. And it, Roy's it, doing calisthenics it was, over there. It was, off, it was off the list for several years. I mean, when it, we first started the list, it came on at 54 for the people. Okay, okay. and then it fell so off. So it's moving back up. I, I think, again, I, I said this this morning, I think there's a Lord of the Rings kind Redis of resurgence off, going on. Yeah. And then they just came out with the card game version. Yes, yes. The reworked one. You're right. right. You're right. Mm -hmm. I, I do know. wonder what that is, and I don't think. I think you were suspecting it was the Rings of Power show. No, I'm not. Well, I think. I think it, this all this push of Lord of the Rings predates that a little bit. Yeah, I think. And I don't right. know what it is though. They did reprint this at some point recently, the special edition of it. Okay. But why? <sighs> something is pushing money. Something is pushing Lord of the Rings. There's a dark force. I'd play here. My precious. <laughs> that was uncanny, folks. Yeah, it was uncanny, that all right. right. Yeah, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between me <laughs> and Andy Serkis. Uh -huh. There's going to be a YouTube video where you and Andy Serkis <laughs> at the same time are like, all right, let's jump to 62. All right, my number 62 is a game. Gosh, I feel like this section of my list especially has been games that are kind of like Mike games that nobody else talks about or particularly enjoys. 
but that's okay. My number 62 is a game called Rise of Tribes. This has dropped a bit wow. again. Uh, well, this was much higher, Tom. This was, um, where am I? Down, this is down 42. This is at 20? I had this way up there, yeah. And the thing is, is that I liked the base 20, game. Yeah. I liked the base game a lot. And then the expansion came out, and I like the expansion quite a bit, but I don't think people like this one as much as I do. I love the dice system so much that... I hate it. Oh, gosh, I love it. You're basically you're rolling three dice, and they're going to have either a blank face, a moon, or a sun. And if you roll two suns, that's going to give you the stronger version of whatever action. You place these dice on, on action spots. And if you have the two moons it's going to give you a lighter version. And so you take one of your dice and you kind of slot it into and push one off. Okay. And so you're kind of not only taking an action for yourself, but you're setting up your opponents to potentially, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to make it so if they want to move this turn, they're going to get a weak version of move. Or if they want to grow this, that, this turn, they're going to get a weak version of grow. It's a very simple game, hmm. maybe too simplistic for some people, that's okay. It is a light game. This is a, I would call this a family weight game, almost. Maybe it's slightly above that. I love the look, I love the components. I like how quickly it plays. Um, I have just kind of fallen off of area control as a mechanism a little bit more, and this is primarily an area majority game, area control, area majority. And so I don't have quite the affinity mm. for it that I used to, but I still think it's a really good design. This was in. Walmart for a while, like they yeah. were pushing this as a yeah. more of a mass market type of. It game. really is mass market tea. I don't. I heard the expansion makes it better. It does make it better, a hundred percent. You might like it. Though. I might. I might. I didn't hate it actually because a lot I, of the complaints was, people have were that you know the the animals didn't. These make more impactful animals, make it more interactive. The game wasn't necessarily as odd as it sounds. Interactive outside of the fact that you're jockeying for spots. The expansion mm. can change that. I would buy a game called Impactful Animals. Ooh. Impacted molar. Impacta impacas. <laughs> All right, go Impactful impaca impalas. Uh, impalas, that's what it is. Yeah. Impacted impalas. Alpacas. Alpaca. Impala alpaca. Go. Okay. Chevy Impala. 62 is the best Azul ever made. OG Azul. Chocolatier. Chocolatier. No, uh, Azul <laughs> stained glass of Sintra. That's yeah. the best one. Two to one, Mike. OG, baby. That's the best one, okay? It's if, got glass. If this is the best one, why didn't he put this one out first? Because he had, he had Really? To, you're going to throw up that argument? <laughs> Let's not go down that road too far. <laughs> he had to do the first one to unlearn mm. some bad habits. Mm. No, I'm kidding. The first one's fantastic. I do wonder, like, if you could go through history, that'd be an interesting thing to see. Like, what if this had been the first one? Would Azul be as popular? That's, and there's other games, you know, like... That's a, that's a good point. I've yeah. always been curious about that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Alternate history. Mm -hmm. no, one cares that no one cares that they should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The what what if? if Azul Stained Glass Seedra had come out first? It's a comic book that mm. no one reads. Nah. It's just like three panels. What if? And then that and some guy going like, it's pretty good. <laughs> That's it. Um, yeah, I really like this one. I uh, played this on the cruise. I keep mentioning the cruise. I don't know why. This is the last, the last big gaming thing we did. Mm -hmm. And still fantastic. Fun. Quick. Equally mean, or it can be. I like mechanically this a little bit more. Mm. Again, I think the first one's great. Sure, no. I'm, I think I'm, if you want to turn that up, you know, strategically, yeah, just yeah. a couple clicks, this one will do that. And then they start getting a little messy after this. I think this. The, mo like the most recent one is just like... Mm. I don't, That's I, what I've heard, and yeah. I honestly haven't even tried it yet. Yeah. But this one, superb. Azul stained glass of Sintra. Sintra. They did it. All right, my number 62 is a crossover in this very top 10 Whoa. with Mr. Mike Delisio. Yes. I wonder what it's going to be. Okay. Masamorra. Well, I mean, uh, the clue is basically it cannot be a crossover with Z. Okay. Uh, is, it, is it Love Letter? No. QE. It is QE. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't Can? remember. I don't remember <laughs> if I built yeah, this nice. list before or after the expansion. I don't remember. Okay. Do you um, think it would go up? It well, I mean, you don't know. I'll remember. never play this without that expansion. I talked to some people on the cruise, and I'm like, "You're learning the expansion." I gotta play the What's expansion. What's it do? It adds a secondary thing, so now second place also gets something. 
which I like a lot. Oh, sure. And, second, and then also the second place is bid is subtracted from the auctioneer's amount. Oh. It's very interesting. Oh, okay, geez. I can see so that. Now you got to do actual math. No, I would do all the math. If you play I'm not this, playing with you. I'll do all the math <laughs> for you. I refuse to play with you. Well, okay. How is that different mm -hmm. than any other game? Uh, that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, love this game so much. It's overpower. Drop I'm actually tempted to bring in some overpowered decks tomorrow. Let's go. I have to go home and build them. Let go build them. Anyway, this was 90 last year, so it's moved up. It's got to be the expansion. You got to be up the for expansion, it. yeah. All right. The people's. <laughs> Take two. The people's. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, I can't do that. No. I can't do that anymore. Uh -uh, no, Ixnay on the, no, the that pudding. No, that was not who you thought Go of. ahead. <laughs> I'm just gonna be me for the people. I'm gonna be my voice yeah, for that. Yeah, uh, the people's number 62 was 66 last year, uh, then 39. It's the year before. It's been on the list for five years. Very popular dice game. Very popular dice game, and that would be Sagrada. Okay. Oh man, somebody just said Sagrada. Yeah, yeah. Somebody was like, "Oh, I prefer Sagrada to stained glass okay. of Sintra." Because again, yeah, they're nothing alike. Right. I don't know why they got compared. <laughs> they they the both happen to be about That's glass. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And actually, if you were like, what's the game most like a stained glass window, I would pick Sagrada over Azul. I don't think either one's particularly thematic, but at least Sagrada, you're building a grid of dice, right. and you can say that looks like a stained glass Sagrada window. Sagrada is much closer to role player than it is to stained glass of Sintra. And that's the comparison I've heard normally, yes. yeah, when they because they both kind of came out around the same time. But yeah, thematically, come on, who right. cares? It's, it's, they're both... Basically abstract. Right. Anyway, very popular game. I don't know that I love it as much as everyone else does. I think it's fine. Um, but, yeah, this one is extremely popular. And Daryl Andrews doesn't have to design anything else because he has to grab it for the rest of his life. This is, but yeah. he hasn't stopped him. He's this is kinda, you you think this is going to be an evergreen? I think it might. I think it kind of is. Pretty close. Yeah. I think it might. Pretty yeah, close. Yeah. No, it's good. It's mm -hmm. good. All right, folks, we got one more for today. Okay. My, hey, fade to black. My number 61, the last game of this particular list oh, no, has... Huh? His mind is going. <laughs> it was black. I don't while. know what you were talking about. It was. We, we had a little bit of a pause. We had a, we had a dramatic entrance from blackness. Mm. From, Got the, it. from the darkness comes the light. Got it. My number 61 is a cooperative game with a... A theme that I think anyone could get behind and some just adorable components, mm, but it's mm. not an easy game. It's a tricky, mm. tricky game. It is Rescue Polar Bears Data and Temperature. All oh, the babies. The, the cute baby, babies. baby bears. So this is a game that... Oh, okay. Guys, I say, folks, if you think this cover looks good, you, what you don't realize is that in just a moment, these bears are both going to die. <laughs> okay, well, that's messed up, Tom. Not okay? when I play. That's how the game plays. Not no, when I play, that's baby. Not true. I save all the polar bears. And this, lose the game in the process. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> this is a game where you are controlling these little boats, and you're going moving around the board, and you are trying to do what it says. You're trying to gather data to try to protect and save the polar bears, and you're trying to keep the temperature at such a level that it does not melt the ice uh, that the polar mm -hmm. bears need to survive. And right. during the game, the, these polar bears are going to be um, reproducing and they're going to be having babies. And so you have these really cute papa and mama bears and these little baby bears. And yes, they are all in imminent danger. <laughs> but the idea behind the game is you're trying to it's protect It's actually a little them. tough for me. It I is, like this game, but it I'm is like, hard. ah, the bear, oh! It like, is, you slam the you, safety, don't worry. Yeah, you get attached because these things are so adorable. They're made of ceramic. Yeah, they're soft. Uh, they are very, are very soft. cute. But the game itself, mechanically, is a rock-solid cooperative game. It has some elements you've seen before, of like action points, mm -hmm. but it does do some interesting things that you don't always see where you're having to kind of have a couple of different moving targets that you're dealing with mm -hmm. and trying to keep the bears uh, safe. And it's one of those games where you have to be okay with the idea that you don't win by saving every bear. It's not going to happen. No. You have to just save enough bears that you can continue that, you can keep the population That's going. right. You know, and, and art imitates mm -hmm. life. Unfortunately, you know, polar bears have had a rough go of it. So this is a game that nah. is trying to 
celebrate. Let's uh, you know, let's let's protect our Arctic friends. Here we go. He's got to go there and make it mm -hmm. all. You know, I I don't care about the bears. Okay, <laughs> my copy of this game, I turned it into an all versus one game, I love where it. I'm out trying to kill the bears. That's right. <laughs> and the rest of the players are trying to save them. Z so plays this. Game? I do. Z plays this game Ooh, underneath a heat. a heat lamp. He has a, a, a beaming heat lamp on the game. He has a little ice game. cube maker that's polar bears. <laughs> right. And you put them on the board, and if you don't finish fast enough... That's right, they melt. He gets a Snoopy sco snow cone machine, and he's doing this the whole time, just spraying ice all over the board and letting it melt. <laughs> Snoopy <laughs> snow cone Did machine. You know what? I should have that on my list this morning. That's actually a good, that's a good one. Like Snoopy love. snow cone snow cone. It was like a very oh popular gosh. homes. It was like, a, it like was, anyone could get a Snoopy snow right. machine. It, like, it was a plastic you could version afford it of it Snoopy's sucked. house, right? A plastic version yeah, of Snoopy's yeah, yeah. house. You would take ice cubes, literally ice cubes. You'd put it into the top. You'd do a crank, and it would turn into shaved ice. And you'd squirt some, you know, syrup on it, and have like. If a, I remember correctly, ice, it was not so. particularly good quality. It was terrible. Okay. It was yes. terrible. Yeah, you basically. Metal. Right, you're like you ripping tendons in your arm trying to get this thing on you. Metal <laughs> shaving. Turn the hand. Metal, right. metal shaving. Yeah, yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> All right, where are we at? 61. 61 is the second best game in the Abyss universe. Mm. This is conspiracy. Is it abyss? Oh. Oh. abyss universe. <laughs> well, Abyss is in the Abyss universe. That was I a, know. That was a tricky thing you might have done to me. Mm -hmm. No, no. I never played this one. It's good. This is the little one. You never played it? I was it's not a little tin. It's a little tin. Yeah, it's a tiny little game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I like this one a lot. It this is, is new to your list, right? No, I think this was on my list last year, yeah. Oh, I thought this came out last year. No, no. This has been out now for a little bit, but it got no traction. Don't you have, like, yeah. data where you can see I what... I did, but I'd have to go fishing for it. I wrote him up to 71 there. Ah, I see. Mm. Um, no, I remember this came out a little longer than that. It just got no traction. Actually, At this all. game was being discounted online. It was DOA, basically. Two months after yeah. it came out? Yeah. Like, no one cared. They came out with this. They had all the alternate covers, much like Abyss did when it came yeah. out. It's like a nice little wink. No one cared. This got absolutely no love, and I don't know why. It's good. It almost does a little bit of the Seven Wonders Duel thing, right? A little bit, yeah, right, yeah. super smart. It's, um... You're doing a, a, some of these same ideas in, in uh, Abyss, this idea of the more you push, the more you want, the more you're leaving for your opponents. Right. That's present here as well. You can look <coughs> at more cards and then select one of those and add it to this growing uh, reverse pyramid. But then the rest of the cards you looked at, you're leaving face up on the table. So people can just go, oh, perfect. I needed that. Boop. Yep. I can take that. Yeah, I like this one a lot. It's simple. It's 20, 25 minutes. But it packs a nice punch into that amount of time. Yeah, you know, nice scoring, great artwork, fun little abilities and powers. I, I think you would like this. Yeah, yeah. it's an under under recognized, under appreciated game, very much. Yeah, there you go. All right, my six my number sixty one was on the list last year at thirty seven. That was the first year it came on. I like this one a lot, although um, it had a lot of initial buzz and then it dropped off immediately, which I suspected. Uh, and that is terraforming Mars. Ares Expedition. Oh, yep. interesting. Yep. Okay. It's not getting the, the big buzz that it's it not. was, but neither is Terraforming Mars, but Terraforming Mars is going to sit around for a while. Very yeah, popular game. For sure. I like this one better than Terraforming Mars. I like that and another game combined. One, two, hit Terraforming Mars. But yes, um, I like the race for the galaxy mechanism of playing cards at the same time, and then everyone gets to do that action. It's just fun. You get still get to build your tableau in front of you, mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel as overwhelming as Terraforming Mars could feel. Um, just nice, smooth game. So it's still on the list at 61. Still you like this better than the uh, original? I do. Yeah, me too. All right, number 61 Ooh. for the people is debuted on the list when it first started at number two. Really? It is now 61. It has fallen a little bit every year. It went from 2, 3, 7, 7, 35, 28, 35, 49, 51, 57, 53, 61. Wow, wow. That's a lot of years. Hold on. Uh, it is a big to, game. This has to be a big game. It is a Euro game. Through the ages? Something big like that? No, no, that? no. no. Uh, well, that's, yeah, but no, it's a Rosenberg game. Oh. Agricola. Agricola. Okay, Agricola. Interesting. Agricola went from 2 to 61, which makes sense because it is not nearly as popular now as it was when it came out, but when it came now out, it was trash. the hotness. <laughs> and now I would say 
It's absolute garbage. Yeah. yeah. What it was came out, one? it also was, but people didn't agree with me. The number one that, that first year was Dominion. Okay. Number two was Agricola. Number three, Come Back Tomorrow. It's going to show up in the next oh, top yeah. ten. Interesting. All right. So, uh, Agricola, very popular game. It introduced a whole genre of feeding your people, but not just that. It's a worker placement. But Uwe Rosenberg invented his own style game, which has been very popular. Also, people stopped talking to him about Bonanza. Yeah. It was weird. I mean, again, and I've said this before, but Uwe Rosenberg, if you go back enough, like before Agricola, he'd made a few a few games, a decent yeah. amount of games, and they were Bonanza, Beans in Space or whatever. The Space he Beans. Made Space Beans, Mamma Mia, yeah. Clunker, yeah. which was a little trading card it was game. Little cards. I mean, like never that was it. Clunker. Right. Huh? I said never name a game Clunker. You're kind of. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Especially probably, since I consider it was it to probably be a clunker, yeah. not in English. That right, name. Right. 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 Clunker. Clunker. Uh, but then he took a couple years off and came back with this, and it's sort of. He was a different person. You, you think know? an alien took him over? I do <laughs> think that. I've said that many a time. Okay, I don't want to be. <laughs> you always have to dra draft the uh, probe card at the beginning of the game to do it. All right. It. Yeah, well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's it. Look, this that, that this game basically ushered in a whole family of games. Right really now, did. I know it's not the first quote unquote worker placement game, but I have a. It feels to me like it just fundamentally changed what Euro games were at that point. I agree. The feeding mm -hmm. your people's thing, yeah. and then the growing actions yes. thing. Those two combined right. created a new mix that hadn't been around before, and then a lot of games jumped on. Right. Alrighty, well, tomorrow we will be doing the final 10 of the first half of our top 100 mm -hmm. at 1 o'clock. Right. Mm -hmm. Then later on that afternoon, we will close out the Kickstarter by just playing games here live. I can promise you we will play at least one terrible game. Woo! If not, that would be pretty cool, but it's never happened. Bring over power, we'll make it happen. Oh. In your face. In your face. I was kidding. I don't want to play over power. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Don't forget to support today's Star Kickstarter. 35 hours left until so then. So close. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. Now who needs to learn how to swallow? Uh-huh.